Well, it's August 15th, 2021. And we got a little tropical depression rolling through here, Southwest Florida, which is fitting for the 50th anniversary of the United States dollar coming off the gold standard. Some say the 50th anniversary is the golden anniversary. So it's, uh, it's fitting, Jim Rickards pointed that out. Who's a really famous, I'd say economist, thought leader, really into gold, he's written several books on it. This is a huge, huge thing. The fact that the US dollar has officially been a fiat currency for 50 years. There is no record of a fiat currency not being backed up by anything surviving past 50 years. So we are in a way creating a historical record. Um, but it's pretty obvious that we're pretty close to the end. And it's somewhat troubling, but it's good. It's a good thing because we are moving into a new age. We are wrapping up one monetary cycle and we are moving into a new monetary cycle. If you were to zoom out in history, you'll notice an 80 to 100 year, what they call centennial or century trend. It's the long-term debt cycle. And we have reached the end of it. Actually, we should have reached it in 2020. And I believe that we kind of did. And then they turned the money printers on and they went crazy. And so they're extending this last rally. But what we are seeing is the end of the fiat dollar system. When we created the dollar, and this is interesting to everybody because it's important to know where you came from so you have an idea of where you're going so that you can profit and protect yourself, more importantly, from what is probably inevitably going to come. 1944, we're about to win the war. The world is looking for a new way to settle trade. And the US says, how about the dollar? There's this famous economist, Keynes, who is famous for a lot of things that we do now in economics. Uh, but he suggests the bank core, which is basically a basket of currencies, which is actually a really good idea. Something that Facebook is kind of working on with their Libra project. So he proposes this basket of currencies. We end up selling the world at Bretton Woods into the US dollar system saying, hey, the US dollar is as good as gold. We backed it with gold. And it's actually better than gold because you can get an interest rate on your US dollar deposits. Haynes proposes this Bancor basket of currencies, which would have been a really great idea. Instead, we go with the US dollar. So the US dollar becomes the world's reserve currency. And to this day, it somewhat is. It's backed up by gold. It's actually better than gold. You can have, you can exchange your dollars for gold at any point in time, particularly if you're a foreign entity, not if you're an American, because in 1933, we, to not solve the Great Depression, but to prolong the Great Depression, we stole all of America's gold. And gold at that time was $20. It was, uh, it was $20 and silver was $1. And if you look at an ounce of US silver, it will say $1. <laughs> so we steal everybody's gold. FDR makes it contraband to own, kind of like having illegal drugs. And he reprices gold to $35 an ounce. So he has all the gold, 1944 comes around, we push the world at Bretton Woods into the US dollar standard. We say, hey, let's just use US dollars. And they go, yeah, it's kind of a good idea, let's do that. And so we end up with the world's reserve currency and that lasts like 27 years until 1971 where we had lost the Vietnam War. And because we'd lost the Vietnam War and we wanted to go play, you know, Crusader around the whole globe and we were broke. And we were importing more than we were exporting and we were essentially broke and the world called our bluff and they started calling in their gold and they said, hey, we don't wanna have deposits. We don't have our dollar deposits. Uh, we want our gold. So they start calling it in. Well, on August 15th, 1971, Richard Nixon came on the famous show Bonanza. And he said, we are severing the gold standard. Essentially what he did is he ended the Bretton Woods agreement right then and there. Nobody really cared for the most part. The good thing about that is a couple of years later, through much litigation, Americans were allowed to once again own gold, which was cool. And what people have done, sovereign individuals have done since then is they've placed themselves on a gold standard. This is something I do, this is something Jim Rickards suggested, it's where I got the idea. And for me personally, I put myself on a 10% gold standard. 10% of my net worth is in physical metals, literally gold or silver. Uh, at this point in time, I have a lot more silver allocation than I have gold because the ratio is so out of whack that I'm like, 
let's stack, <laughs> let's stack silver. I'll exchange it for gold at a later point in time. Uh, sometimes I've used paper gold futures, not futures, but paper physical gold um, to balance a portfolio on the edges to keep my 10% margin. At this point in time, I know where we are in the cycle, so I'm actually looking to expand that way beyond that. So you can have yourself on a personal gold standard or metal standard. Silver, I like because it's so undervalued at the moment. But nonetheless, if you look at a graph of like technological capability, you'll notice that in the physical world, we stopped advancing. We stopped flying faster. Planes stopped going faster. Cars stopped going further on fuel in many ways. Uh, we went into this period of crazy inflation where those that had assets that went up with inflation benefited from inflation and those that did not, like wages, didn't. And so... What's occurred since 1971 is that wages for the most part have stayed flat and assets like homes and housing, education, uh, goods and services like education, stocks, things like that have gone, you could say parabolic, but they've inflated with the currency supply. Breaking the gold standard allowed us as a nation to print way more than we produced. Put yourself on a personal gold standard which I think is a smart thing to do because we are now at a, sp a spot where the currency will once again change form. And so we went from having actual physical gold pre-1933, physical gold, physical silver, physical copper. America was the greatest nation on earth from 1800s all the way to 19 <laughs> 1913. No income tax, no IRS, no, fe no central bank from... 1836 to 1913. No central bank, no income tax, very small government. You could do anything in this country. And the stuff you had in your pocket was literally copper, silver, or gold. 1933, they steal the gold. They change the form of the US dollar. They keep the name, they keep the brand, but they make it a paper. And they go, hey, here's a $20 bill for your gold, which is what it was. No big deal, but you can't own the gold. And then they reprice the gold. So essentially everybody who had $20 no longer had an ounce of gold, they had like 65% of an ounce of gold. They devalued the dollar. The government came in with guns and stole from their citizens. Imagine that. What's up guys? Love it. Yeah, buttercup. Love it, love it. So they steal from the American public, which I know is unbelievable. And they change the form of the US dollar, they make it paper, but it's backed by gold. You can believe it, it's backed by gold and foreign nations can exchange their gold, but why would they? They could just get a US interest rate and for 27 years, almost three decades, it worked. And then we ran out of gold because our government grew and grew and grew and fought wars that they couldn't win and they went broke. And so instead of fixing it then, they decided let's kick the can. It's 1971. They make it fully paper and nobody cared. Everything functioned just fine. And so that allowed the, F the central bank and the government to grow at a rate from 1971 to, to 2021 that we've never seen in, in history. Like you've, the size of our government is absolutely incredible. And our currency is completely fake. And our wages have remained flat and stagnant. And our airplanes don't fly faster or further on better fuel, they don't. We've technologically in the physical world been stagnant since 1971. See, when the money goes bad or the money is dishonest, nothing can be. And so that's where we're at. And we're at this spot where interest rates on the US dollar no longer exist. Because the interest rates on the US dollar no longer exist, we're gonna go negative. And the way that we're gonna go negative at our 50th anniversary here is in the next year or two, they're going to roll out the digital dollar. Now we already have digital dollar, but we still have physical cash. That's the next thing that's going to happen. They're going to keep riding this gravy train of fiat currency so they can print things that don't exist and they can obtain things that do exist as long as they can until it literally collapses. And I think for you and me, the best thing we can do is obtain assets that inflate with the inflation create yield and then protect ourselves with a 10% allocation to the physical metals. And in this case, I would even add crypto in that basket. Still fiat, but it kind of is backed up by electricity 
in an odd way. But it's interesting to me how currency has changed form. It goes from being gold, silver, copper, to being paper, but backed up by gold, to being up, psych, there is no gold, we, we took it all, we spent it all, to being completely paper, but they backed it up with a petrodollar. So essentially what they did is they pegged it to oil in a way, and then they backed it up with the US military. But at this point in time, America's starting to realize, especially with us pulling out of Iraq after 20 years, Afghanistan or wherever we are, Taliban taking over in two weeks, that uh, America doesn't win wars anymore. <laughs> America is broke, America is fake, the currency is collapsing, it is inflating like crazy. In comparison to cryptos, it's actually in hyperinflation. In comparison to the metals, it's lost 50% of its value in the last 24 months. It's not looking too bright and cheery. But for you watching, if you're aware and you look into monetary history and you look into how the dollar has literally changed form from time to time, you can protect yourself and then potentially even profit, which is kind of ironic and almost sad that some people are going to profit amazingly if they can see this trend. The US dollar will once again change form. It won't change the problem. It won't create a solution to the problem because you see when we did the Bretton Woods agreement we created a world where we had to dollarize the world we always had to create more dollars because the whole world needed them for circulation we don't know how to get off of it so what we did is we continued to outsource our production to foreign countries we continued to spend debt so that we could push dollars into circulation so that the world economy could continue to circulate on a dollar standard and up to this point it's pretty obvious that it was a fail should have went with the bank or we should have just kept it as actual physical gold and what i think you'll see nation states start to do over the next few years is actually make a return back to gold silver potentially copper i don't know exactly what's going to happen from here but i know that for negative interest rates to really happen they're going to need a digital currency a fully digital currency where people can where they can know all about your transactions where they can stimmy check you right to right to your phone <laughs> where where if you're a bad boy or girl they can penalize you. It's gonna be pretty gnarly. And at the end of the day, I don't know if it'll take uh, another 10 years, another five years, certainly won't be 50 years, uh, it'll fail. And when it fails, I believe we'll have a return back to solid sound money. That'll be cryptos that you can't just print out of thin air because they're some sort of code that dictates how many can come into circulation and when they can come into circulation. And those will be fiat to an extent, but they'll essentially be electricity. Or there'll be just a return back to hard money standards, copper, gold, silver. I think that it'll be a combination of all of this. I think that the market will choose which ones. And I think that long term, the government will no longer be in the business of currency. As they should have never been in the business of currency. Prior to 1913, they really weren't in the business of currency. It was just copper, silver, gold. And America had its best 100 year run that it's ever had. The world had a good 100 year run. So we'll see. Thanks for watching.